Nothing is back with a more powerful version of one of its hits. It's the Nothing Phone 2A+. So how much better of a mid-ranger is it, and is it worth the extra money? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our Nothing Phone 2A Plus review. The Nothing Phone 2A was a popular mid-ranger, and now Nothing has released a sequel of sorts in the souped-up Nothing Phone 2A Plus. Compared to the old Nothing 2A, the Plus model packs a more powerful chipset, an upgraded selfie cam, and improved charging. The design hasn't really changed, the new phone is exactly the same size. Again you get that see-through back, through which you can check out some of the phone's internals. The back is grippy and actually collects plenty of smudges and dust. The horizontal camera bump and rounded frame are also just like on the Nothing 2A. And like the 2A, the 2A Plus is rated at IP54 against dust and splashes of water. The Nothing 2A Plus also brings back the glyph LEDs on the back, which can light up for different purposes. These include notification alerts, visual feedback for the volume and charging, or as a countdown timer. They can also come in handy as a ring light for the cameras. There's a dedicated glyph interface for controlling their behavior. And you can use the Composer app to create custom ringtones slash glyph patterns. The display of the 2A Plus is basically identical to that of the 2A, it's a 6.7-inch 1080p OLED with a 120Hz refresh rate and Gorilla Glass 5 protection. The screen's max brightness has been improved slightly. We managed over 730 nits with the manual slider, which could boost to about 1100 nits in auto mode when in bright sun. The Nothing 2A maxed out at about 1000. The screen looks good overall. It's plenty sharp at 395 ppi and has support for both 10-bit color and HDR10 Plus video. And while the 120Hz refresh rate smooths out your swiping and scrolling, the phone can dial that down to 60Hz when you're not interacting with it to save energy. But just like on the Nothing Phone 2A, on the 2A Plus we couldn't get games to run at anything higher than 60fps. For audio, there's a stereo speaker setup. Like the speakers of the Nothing 2A, those of the Plus model earned a loudness rating of good, and the sound quality is pretty decent, with a bit of bass and clean mids and highs. You can wake up and unlock the phone using the under-display fingerprint reader, and it's quite responsive. The base model of the Nothing Phone 2A Plus now comes with 256 gigs of storage, as opposed to 128, but it still isn't expandable through microSD. The interface of the Nothing Phone 2A Plus is the latest Nothing OS 2.6, running on top of Android 14. It's quite close to stock Android in functionality, but with customized aesthetics. These include custom-looking monochrome icons, pixelated fonts, and plenty of custom Nothing widgets too. You can even turn the whole interface monochrome if you wanted to. There's support for various Nothing earbuds through the Nothing X app. And the Nothing Phone 2A Plus has promised 3 years of software updates and 4 years of security patches down the line. Now we get to the chipset. It's a MediaTek Dimensity 7350 Pro 5G, as opposed to the Dimensity 7200 Pro on the Nothing 2A. This is one of the main upgrades which you'll find on this model compared to the older one. Nothing claims about a 10% improvement in CPU performance, and up to 30% better graphics performance. In benchmarks, indeed, the Nothing Phone 2A Plus is a bit more powerful than the regular 2A. It doesn't exactly blow the other phone away though. The scores are quite decent for this price range, and the Nothing Phone 2A Plus handled both regular tasks and gaming quite smoothly. The thermal management is excellent too. In our prolonged stress tests, the Nothing Phone 2A Plus displayed little thermal throttling or performance loss. The phone has a 5000 mAh battery and has some of the best battery life around. It aced our tests, earning an active use score of 16 hours and 48 minutes. That's even better than the already great showing of the Nothing Phone 2A. Charging has been slightly upgraded too, from 45 watts to 50. Again, there's no charger included in the box. With the proper adapter, we were able to charge the 2A Plus from 0 to 60% in half an hour, and a full charge took just over an hour. Hardly faster than the Nothing Phone 2A, and not particularly fast in general. The rear cameras here are the same as on the Nothing Phone 2A. There's a 50 megapixel main cam, together with a 50 megapixel ultra wide cam. There has been an improvement in the selfie camera though. 
Instead of a 32 megapixel front facing cam, now there's a 50 megapixel one, which supports 4K video capture. We'll start off with the selfies then. The camera captures 50 megapixel stills by default, so you end up with pretty large file sizes. Quality wise, the selfies are pretty solid. Skin tones and textures look great, and there's plenty of fine detail. The dynamic range and contrast are also very decent. Compared to the Nothing Phone 2A, you get better colors and nicer rendition of the background, but it's not a night and day difference. The sensor is the same size, despite the higher resolution, so there's no substantial difference in the depth of field or defocused background. And now the main cam. It produces 12.5 megapixel photos due to pixel binning, and during the day these come out with plenty of detail and balanced sharpening. The contrast and colors are quite nice, but dynamic range could be better. Also, the main camera has a tendency to overexpose a bit. The main camera does pretty well with people and faces. Skin tones and textures come out nice. Even though the Nothing Phone 2A lacks a dedicated telephoto camera, it still captures some pretty clean and detailed photos at 2 times digital zoom, though they're not lossless. In low light, the Nothing Phone 2A Plus will use night mode processing automatically. There's plenty of detail in the frame, pretty low noise, and natural looking colors. Shadows are well developed, and so are highlights, and light sources are reasonably well contained. 4K videos from the main camera look pretty great. Detail is good, and there's practically no noise. Colors are a bit on the saturated side, and the dynamic range and contrast are good. All of the cameras have electronic stabilization enabled by default. On the main cam, you can notice some wobble left over though. The main camera captures solid low light videos with plenty of detail, and well developed shadows and highlights. And now the ultra wide. Its photos are decent overall. The detail is okay, and so are the colors. There is some noticeable softness outside the center, but it's fine. More importantly, we see the same tendency for overexposing as the main cam. At night, the ultra wide camera does a very good job for this sort of cam. The detail and dynamic range are surprisingly good, and shadows and highlights are well developed. The ultra wide cam does well with video capture too. Its 4K clips have great detail for an ultra wide. So that's the Nothing Phone 2A Plus. It's quite a well rounded mid range phone with a standout design, excellent battery life, a solid chipset, and good camera performance. They've refined a bunch of things compared to the Nothing Phone 2A, which is still on the market. The selfie cam here takes slightly better photos. The screen gets a little brighter, the charging speed is a tiny bit faster, and the chipset performance is ever so slightly better. But all of these are not that noticeable in real world use. It's more like the Nothing Phone 2A Plus 10% extra. It's fine actually, seeing as the Plus model launches at almost the same price as the 2A in India, and it's just 50 quid more expensive in the UK. Other markets will have to wait till September to get it. Thanks for watching guys! If you're looking for alternatives, you can check out our reviews of the regular Nothing Phone 2A and the Samsung Galaxy A55. Let us know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one.